Okay, so in this video I'm going to be talking about resolving vectors at angles. I'm going to be skipping over some of the more basic knowledge to do with scalars and vectors, such as what they are and how to resolve basic vectors, just because that's in a lot of revision guides as well as there's already a lot of videos about that on YouTube, so I didn't see much point in making a video on it. So instead I'm going to be talking about resolving vectors at angles, which is slightly more challenging. So here we have a box on an inclined plane, and that box is stationary, so you know that the forces acting on it are in equilibria, there is no resultant force on it. So now we're going to have a look in a bit more detail. So we say that this box has a weight that acts downwards due to gravity, and this weight is equal to the mass of the box multiplied by the gravitational field strength, which is 9.81 on Earth. And then we say that the angle of the inclined plane is theta. So if we look in a little bit more detail again, we'll see that you can resolve this weight, this vector, that is weight, into two components, W1, I'm going to call it for simplicity, and W2. So we say that W1 is the force that acts down the slope, and W2 is the force that acts against the slope, or the force that the box exerts on the slope. As you can see, I've written a bit about this here, this is the component that is parallel, to the slope, and this is the component that is perpendicular to the slope at a right angle. Now I'm going to give you some formulas for how to work out W1 and W2 using theta and the weight of the box, and I'm going to show you how I derive those formulas in a bit more detail afterwards. So here are the formulas. To work out W1, you want to do the weight of the box multiplied by the sine of the angle theta, and to work out W2, you want to do the weight of the box multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta. Now, if we just substitute W for mg, you'll see that we just get two more formulas here, where W is mg. Now, this is useful because if they give you a question like this, where they only give you the mass of the box, it is extremely important that you convert the mass to weight before resolving it, because it's impossible to resolve mass as it is a scalar. However, weight is a force, which is a vector, so you can resolve it. So this formula is easier to use if you get given the mass of the box. And I'm just going to show you a bit about where these actually, where these formula have come from. So if we move W1 down to form a triangle, we actually end up with this here, this right angle triangle. And because of geometry, this angle here will be the same as this angle here. So theta is here. So we say that this here, this the hypotenuse of this triangle is the the weight of the box. The adjacent angle is the perpendicular component, and the opposite side is the force that's acting down the slope, which is parallel to the slope. And we know this is a right angle here, because it's parallel and perpendicular, so there's a right angle here. So if we just use basic trigonometry, we know that this is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite angle, this is the adjacent angle. So if we wanted to find W1, we're using H and O, so we want to be using sine, and we know that the opposite angle, or the opposite side even, is equal to the sine of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse, according to basic trigonometry. If you don't know that, there is a lot of videos about this on YouTube as well, so I suggest you go and watch one of those. And we know that the opposite is w1 and we know that the hypotenuse is the weight so that is where this equation comes from and the same can be said for working out w2 the adjacent equals the hypotenuse multiplied by the cos of the angle and the adjacent is w2 the hypotenuse is weight and that's where that comes from. One last thing I'm just going to talk about here is that is as this box is in equilibria there is forces that are balancing W1 and W2. The force that is balancing W2, I'm just going to get a different colour here, the force that is balancing W2 is acting in this direction and is the reaction force or the force that the slope is exerting on the box or the support force, whatever you want to call it and that is the exact same value as W2, W times cos theta, and the force that is balancing the force acting down the slope is going to be 
friction. So I'm just going to call this F and I'll call this the reaction force. So F will be equal to W1 because the, the box is not moving. So even in an exam question you get asked to work out the friction or the, um, the force of friction that is holding the box and stopping it from sliding down. You know it's going to be the same as W1 and the reaction force is going to be the same as W2. So now we'll move on to a slightly more difficult example. Okay, so here we're going to look at a bit more of an advanced example. So what we have here is an inclined plane with a pulley attached to the top of it, and we have two masses that are attached to a piece of string that runs over the frictionless pulley. And the question is, calculate the acceleration of the system. So it's talking about calculating uh, the acceleration of this entire system, the two masses. And we're going to give some values to this now. So we're going to say that that's the frictionless pulley. That one, or this mass here, has a mass of 10 kilograms. This one, 5 kilograms. And the angle of the slope is 35 degrees. So we want to calculate the acceleration of this system. So just for simplicity, I'm going to show you the forces that are acting on the system. We've got the force of this one being pulled downwards by gravity, the weight of it. We've got the weight of this mass here acting directly downwards. And for this example, we're going to need to resolve this weight, and I'll show you why in a minute. And we've also got the reaction force acting upwards, but we don't need that for this example. And of course, we've got friction, but for this example, we're going to be ignoring friction. The friction in the pulley and the friction of the slope we will be ignoring, as well as this reaction force. So how would you go about solving this? First, we're just going to call this mass 1, and this force acting downwards, force 1. So for this one here, it's going to be called mass 2, and we need to decide which force we're going to be using for force 2. So we need to decide which force is going to act against force 1. Well, it's not going to be the reaction force. The weight is acting downwards, so it's not going to be that force. It's not going to be the force acting against the slope. It is going to be the force acting down the slope. As you can see, they're acting in opposite directions. So the resultant force is going to come from there, and then using that resultant force, we can calculate the acceleration. So we're going to call this one force 2. So how can we calculate the acceleration of the system? We know that F equals ma, which therefore means that A equals F divided by m. And for the whole system, F is going to be the resultant force, and m is going to be the sum of the masses, as you can see here. Now I've put force 1 plus force 2 and m1 plus m2. But it gets a little bit more complicated with the forces because we're trying to find the resultant force which means one of them is acting in one direction and one of them is acting in the other direction and they're vectors which means one of them is going to be a negative value so we need to decide in what direction we're going to calculate the acceleration we could calculate it in either direction but just in one direction it will be a negative value so for this example I'm going to say that we're calculating the acceleration in this direction from left to right. So that means that this value for force is going to be positive as it is going in that direction and this value is going to be negative. So we'll start with an we'll start with the easiest part of this which is going to be calculating force 1. So force 1 is just going to be mg which is going to be 10 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 which is the value of g so we know that this force is going to be 98.1 newtons so now we want to calculate the value of force 2 and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because to work out force 2 we first need to work out the value of the weight of the box which is going to be mg again so that's going to be 5 multiplied by 9.81 81, which equals 49.05. So now we've got our weight, we can look back at the previous slide where we talked about calculating these, or resolving this vector. But in this case, W1 is force 2, the weight is 49.05. And the angle is not theta, it is 35. So if you were to put this in on your calculator, 
you'd come up with a value of force 2 being 28.13 because it's acting in the opposite direction it's going to be minus 28.13 so now we've got our value for force 1 it's going to write force 1 equals and our value for force 2 so now we need to work out our value for mass 1 which is quite easy it's right there it's 10 kilograms and our value for mass 2 which is 5 kilograms and now we can work out the acceleration of this system so the acceleration is going to be equal to force 1 98.1 plus negative 28.13 and that's all going to be divided by the sum or the uh, the total mass and now the reason we don't need to make one of the masses negative is because mass is a scalar so it has no direction whereas force is a vector so it has direction which is why we need to consider one of them as being negative and find the resultant force you can't find the resultant mass there is just going to be one mass which is the total 10 plus 5 which in turn equals 69 point nine seven divided by fifteen and that ends up coming out as four point six six and because this is acceleration and we've been using newtons and kilograms our value for units is going to be in meters per second squared and that is the acceleration of the system now, this example might have been a bit complicated, and if you have any questions about the example, just ask in the comment, in the comment section below. So that is the value, and this is how you work it out. So you need to decide which direction it's, the acceleration is in, and they will probably ask you that. It will probably actually show you that in the question. Then you need to work out both your forces, and you need to find the resultant. Make sure you remember the direction they're going in, because it's a vector. And then you need to work out the total of your masses, and then you need to use the equation A equals F over M to calculate the acceleration. So that has been my video on resolving vectors at angles. I hope it was useful and thanks for watching.